Hey everybody, today we're going to put together the punch attack with just blueprints, so stick around. I've gone ahead and migrated over all of the animations, the flipbooks, the sprites, and the texture here for the punch. We now need to go to our blueprints and first of all, create a new structure. Struct punch flipbooks. Rename the other struct to movement flipbooks. And in here, we need this to be a flipbook, paper flipbook, and this is punch down, punch up, punch right, punch left. Punch down right, punch down left, punch up right, punch up left. Now we need to go to our base character. Under our variables over here, we have our movement flipbooks. Create a new one, call it punch flipbooks. I'll move that up into config. Make this of our punch flipbooks type. Compile and save. Now over in our player character, this is where we want to set our punch flipbooks. So next, go to your project settings, find input. Add a new action mapping, we'll call it punch, and we're going to put it on the left mouse button. Create a new punch action event. Go to the viewport, and we need to add a sphere collision. We'll call this attack radius. Let's set it to 150. Keep it on overlap all dynamic. That's going to detect if anybody's within the radius, um, if the punch lands. When we punch, we want to first play an animation before we detect any actual hits or do the damage. So, create a new boolean called attack gate. Boolean, drag that up into config again. We're going to make another function kind of like open footstep gate, except this time it's open attack gate. And all this does is set our attack gate to true, and then returns. By the way, attack gate default value should be true. Make sure you set that. Put a branch here and check if the attack gate is open. If it is, first we set it to false. Make a new function called play punch animation. And this is where we're going to play our flipbook as well as move our sprite a little bit in the direction that we punch and then back again so we have a little bit of a, a velocity to our attack. Go over to the left, let's make a new local variable and we'll call this new location. Make it of the vector type. The default values here is fine. Now we're going to take our animation direction. We need to switch. If we're down, grab the sprite, set flipbook, and we're going to need to do this for each of these. So two more. Move that centered. Okay. So if we're down, we go down. That's not the right one. We punch down. Hey, this is me from the future. I made an error in uh, this video and I'm coming back in in order to fix that. We need to not set the flipbooks here manually, but we need to grab the punch flipbooks struct that we made because these are set in our derived classes, our child classes. We are in the base character here, so if we were to have an enemy and we were to punch, 
it would be using the wrong flip book. So make sure you just plug this struct into all of these inputs. And now it'll dynamically grab the correct flipbook that is set in all of the child classes. Also, if you wanted to, you can set this local variable and then only call set relative location one time. I'll delete all of these. We only do this one time. Drag this down here and send in new location there. Set, 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 set. And hook them all up. Plug these all down here. Plug the sprite in, the new location, set relative location. We call it one time. Then we go to the timer. So that's another way to do this um, using that uh, local variable if you want to, or you can have the duplicate uh, set relative location everywhere. Just a different way to approach it. So now we're gonna go back uh, to the original video. Don't get confused if it looks differently. I just wanted to jump in and show this. Okay, next we also need to now move. So we need to get the sprite get relative location. We're going to do that for each as well again. And for down, we're going to subtract 25 in the x direction. And then we want to set relative location. to the new location and teleport. And we gotta do that for every single one. So if we're going up, we actually need to add 25. If we're going to the, if this, this is to the right, so we need to add 25 in the Y axis. Make sure that these are connected, by the way. If we are going to the left, we need to subtract 25 in the y-axis. All right, and for the rest of these, we need to add and subtract. So for down right, we can do a negative 25. Yeah, that's better. And then add 25 in the y. For down left, We are subtracting and subtracting 25. For upright, we are adding 25 and adding 25. And for up left, we're adding 25 and subtracting 25. Oops. Make sure you connect your sprite nodes to the target pins. Okay, so now we've got all of our flip books being set here. Next, we need to set a timer. So we're going to create a new timer handle called attack timer. Make this of the timer handle variable. Drag that up to config. We're going to set a function by timer. Yeah, set timer by function name. And all of these are gonna connect down to it. The function name is the open attack gate. Open attack gate, make sure that is spelled right. Let's do a 0.3 seconds time. It is not looping. And we can set our attack timer afterwards so that we have that variable stored just in case we want to check it at any time in the future. Make it nice and clean. There we go. There's our little logic of playing our animation and setting up this timer. And when this timer goes off, it'll reopen the attack gate, allowing us to attack again. Okay. In Animate, 
Right before we set the animation direction, we want to check the attack gate. Put it into a branch. If the attack gate is open, we can play our animation. This is so that we don't interrupt our punch animation if our attack gate is closed, because we know if the attack gate is closed, that means we're in the middle of punching. Back down on our punch event, after we close our attack gate, we will play our punch animation. One last thing before I forget, when we reopen the attack gate, we also want to reset set relative location of the sprite back to zero. Otherwise, we're going to continue to add. We're going to continue to add our location with those 25s and start to move our sprite around the map. We don't want that. So now if we come over to play, we get a little punch, and it comes back. Now that we're playing the punch animation, we actually need to detect if we're hitting anything. So, we need to get our attack radius. We want to get all overlapping actors. Filter for BP enemy, base enemy. And we want to do a for each on all of those enemies. We also want to cast to the enemy class because this just returns the basic actor type and we need it to be the character type because we are going to launch the character and where we want to launch we want to get our location get their location and we want to get unit direction vector we want to go from our location to their location and we want to have a force, so make a new float variable called attack force of type float. Move it up to config, compile save, give it a value of 750. And we're going to split this struct and split the velocity over there. The return x value is a multiply, y is a multiply, and z is a multiply. Z we also need to add 1 in order to ensure that it is positive before we multiply. We're going to put the attack force here, multiply into each of these. Because the Z value when we're on the ground is a 0, if we add 1 it'll make it positive so that we don't multiply by 0. X goes there, Y goes there, and Z goes there. Set up your attack force for 750 and set your gravity scale to 2.8. So that way, when we come into play, it should feel a little bit more weighty when we punch our bad guys around. Last but not least, we want to add a particle. So we're going to spawn system at location. And I'm going to do some punch particles that I made and the location is the enemy's location. Yeah, there we go. So there you go. That's how you add a punch effect with some knockback force and particle sprites using only blueprints. See you next time.